These true crime stories are so horrific, it's difficult to believe they actually happened, or that human beings could be capable of committing such atrocities. And yet, these stories are indeed all true. Sometimes, real life is a lot grimmer than fiction. Sometimes, real life involves murder, abduction, betrayal, torture, and death. 12 True Creepy Crimes That Will Make You Lock Your Doors Tonight 1. Angela Hammond She was talking on the payphone with her fiancé and saying how there is this suspicious truck that keeps driving around the block. Then, that truck parks near her where the payphone is, he gets out and starts looking around with his flashlight as if he lost something, then he confronts Angela and abducts her. Her fiancé heard all of this on the other line and immediately got in his car to drive where Angela was. When doing so, he drove past the guy in the truck and Angela was apparently screaming his name for help, so he turns around and tries following the truck and his transmission fucks up and the guy got away. Angela has never been heard from again. And, she was pregnant. 2. Annie Borjesson I find the case of Annie Borjesson really weird. She was a Swedish student studying in Edinburgh. She then went to Prestwick Airport, literally the other side of the country, then down a bit caught on CCTV at the airport for 10 seconds, then left. She tried to take out money multiple times from different ATMs, but didn't have the funds so was denied. She was seen wandering about Prestwick, and then was found dead on the beach. Her long hair had been cut off, and the post-mortem, as far as I have read, concluded death by drowning. She may have been victim to foul play, or it was suicide. I also found that her parents' emails were allegedly hacked later on. It may be a case of self-inflicted violence, mental health issues, but I find Annie's case just so bizarre and sad. 3. The Hinterkaifeck Murders The Hinterkaifeck Murders a family saw footprints in the snow leading to their farm, but no footprints out of the farm. A few days later, they were killed in their own home. There was evidence that the perpetrators were staying in their house or the farm before the killings. It's creepy because your house is supposed to be the safest place. It's hard to feel secure when you think about the possibility that your killer may be living with you without you noticing. 4. Dorothy Scott. I was just reading about Dorothy Scott recently. Her story is the saddest, and the creepiest was the bones of the dead dog the killer left on top of her remains to throw scavenger dogs off of his trail. Also, how her watch was stopped to the exact moment she died. I just can't believe that he called her family so often and they could never trace the calls, I know it was the times though. But the whole thing is so horrifying. 5. Brandon Swanson. For those who are not familiar with his story, Brandon was a 19-year-old who lived in Marshall, MN. He was returning home from a party recently celebrating his graduation from a community college up in a town north of Marshall called Canby and was on his way home. Along the way home he crashed in a ditch. For some reason he was taking gravel roads even though the highway between the two towns was a straight shot north to south. I am guessing he took this route as a joyride type of thing since he loved his car and driving in general or maybe he had a little too much to drink at the party and didn't want to deal with any state troopers on patrol. He called his dad for a ride and eventually got tired of waiting inside his crashed car and started to walk towards Marshall. He claimed to his dad to see, lights, of something nearby then abruptly exclaimed, oh shit, to his dad while still on. The phone and his call ended. To this day no one knows what happened to him. No body found, none of his belongings found, nothing. There's more to the story but that's my summary. If you want to learn more just dig around. My guess on what happened to Brandon is either he slipped and fell in a river due to not being able to see in the darkness, got shot and buried somewhere by a belligerent farmer who hated people trespassing on his property and would rather shoot than ask questions or was abducted by aliens which would explain the lights. This case just creeps me out because I too live in southern MN and I'm semi-familiar with the Marshall area. 
It's mostly flat farmlands around here so I really do not understand how someone can just disappear into thin air in the middle of nowhere without a body or any remains being found. 6. The Bennington Triangle Disappearances Beginning in November 1945 through October 1950, five people, ages 8 to 74 years old, went missing in the area. One was an experienced hunting guide and another was a 53-year-old woman described as an experienced camper and hiker who knew the area like the back of her hand. I've hiked Vermont's long trail myself and there are places where you get a feeling of being watched by someone or some thing. In 2008, an instructor at Bennington College and experienced hiker got lost on the mountain, later recounted his strange experiences and swore he would never again hike the trail alone. 7. The Setagaya Family The killer stayed in the house for hours, eating their the Setagaya family's food, logging into the family computer and sleeping on their couch. It's so creepy because rarely does a killer stick around for hours after they commit their crime making themselves at home. 8. Brandon Lawson Ran out of gas in middle of nowhere, TX in 2013. Called the cops, much of it is inaudible but he implies he's being chased into the woods and says he needs the cops. When police arrived, they find his truck but nothing else. Not a trace of him since. 9. Katarzyna Zawada, the skin case. A young Polish student disappears in Krakow City. Few months later a ship on the Vistula River stops because something stuck into a propeller. What they have found surprised everyone. They have gotten out a skin of missing Katarzyna Zawada. To be more precise, a suit made of human skin. Someone had cut all the limbs and head then created a body suit from remaining part which was probably worn by the murderer for some time. Despite media attention and increased police interest every few years a perpetrator never had been found. 10. Cassie Jo Stoddart She Cassie Jo Stoddart was house-sitting for her aunt. She invited her boyfriend over and his two friends came over as well. His friends left and said they were going to the movies. They didn't. At some point before, leaving, they unlocked a basement door, unbeknownst to her. They shut the power off to scare her. They sat there, hiding, until her boyfriend left and she was alone and proceeded to put masks on, come in the house and stab her. If that isn't bad enough, a video was found where they planned to murder her ahead of time. There was footage of them right after they killed her as well. 11. Chris Creamers and Lisanne Froon. Another creepy mystery that resonates with me is the disappearance of Chris Creamers and Lisanne Froon. Long story short, two Dutch girls visiting Panama decide to go on a hike a day before they were scheduled to meet a guide for a tour and they go missing the same night. Ten weeks later their remains and possessions are found downstream from where the girls were hiking. What creeps me out the most about this disappearance is the pictures that were found on Listen's camera that turned up in the remains. The pictures go from the usual nice pictures of landscapes and of the girls posing with landmarks to cryptic pictures of the darkness as what many assume were attempts to use the flash of the camera to act as a signal for rescuers. Also there was a photo of back of Chris's head with what possibly looks like blood by her temple. Just the fact that no one knows what happened to these two during their time in the jungle is what is most unsettling about this mystery. 12. Daniel Laplante's Murders Daniel Laplante is a triple murderer. He killed a nursery school teacher and her two kids in 1987. After a massive manhunt they still could not find him. The ultra-creepy thing is what happened. He was eventually discovered after being on the run in the closet of a girl he'd dated. She opened her door one night to see him standing there, in her mother's clothes, face smeared with makeup, holding a machete. He tied her and her family up, but the youngest narrowly escaped. As if this isn't bad enough, they again could not find him, till two weeks later. The family, who'd moved out, came back home and saw Laplante in the window. 
The police were called and later found out why he'd been so hard to find. Daniel had been living in the walls of his former girlfriend's house the entire time.